Thank you for 40k subs on YouTube at long last. It didn't even take a year since we hopped from 30k to 40k. First zero hype into overdress hype. Y'all have definitely been carrying this channel and also coming through on the Twitch and everything and just supporting me. Like I, I said already in past videos, you know, after my birthday, I really cannot thank you guys enough for being so damn amazing. So huge thank you for coming through and subscribing. I really, really appreciate it. 40k has been, you know, a goal that I've been focusing on for quite some time. I'm starting to feel that with the way that overdress is looking it might not actually be unrealistic to reach 100k one day it might take a few years but honestly i've already been doing this for years so you know I'll, i'm fine with many years to come if i can get that silver play button eventually and apparently 33.5 percent of y'all that watch the videos are still not subscribed so if that would change then maybe that 100k dream isn't actually so far off but i guess first k first we gotta reach 50k but thank you above all else for the 40k as well i'm just talking numbers here obviously i'm very overjoyed and thank you so much for just putting me up like this honestly just supporting the channel like you guys do you know just watching the videos liking the videos commenting it always means a lot so thank you so damn much all right so now that we've gone over the 40k and it's time to start talking about other over things such as over triggers and over dress now i'm going to break this video up into several sections so first we're going to talk about the events that got announced and like various merch and stuff like that then we're going to talk about the zero news because there's some pretty big ones that got announced today as well and then talk about the ccg like summarize the cards that got revealed over the last week and do the same thing as we usually do before that a couple things if you still need to get any overdress product i do recommend checking out parkage.com you can use discount code different five or five percent discount at checkout they also have a special bundle where you can get one of each of the overdress start decks and a booster box for the first booster set together in a really nice bundle so you can pick that up if you still are unsure of what you want to build and just get a little bit of a taste of everything with the starter decks as well as the booster set on top of that, now that we're talking about events, the good friends over at ENTCG are actually doing a big large scale remote fight tournament because as you guys saw, Springfest has been announced for the English TCG, which is going to be like a large scale remote fight tournament, you know, with all kinds of marvelous prizes for every single format. And so if you want to start practicing already for Springfest, ENTCG is doing their mid spring tourney, which is free entry and they have all kinds of prizes. I'll leave a link to the blog post uh, in the description that you can check out this event. You know, the prize range from like boosters and like you know boxes of like older product it is going to be v premium so you know basically celebrating the re release of client selection volume 2 now that all the client selections are out you have all 24 clients to choose from that you can use so hopefully i see you guys there because i definitely want to support these kind of like big events i've said it in the past on my social media like whenever i see anyone doing large scale remote fight tournaments i definitely want to promote them because you know it's really important so vision get on it <laughs> so if you want to join the mid spring tourney definitely check out the link in description i do recommend you guys check that out they have some really interesting bot that they use to run the tournament as well where like the bot does the pairings and you can report your results with it as well so it's pretty interesting so i definitely recommend checking it out it's gonna be happening in the morning european time so 10 a.m cet on april 11th and of course it's gonna be using discord and they also have a vice schwarz tournament as well if you feel like playing that instead all right now let's take a look at some japanese events as well first things first i think this one is actually a pretty big one to talk about because the bushiro tcg strategy presentation for 2021 summer it's happening quite early this year normally this happens in july but they announced it is happening on the 12th of may which is like five or six weeks away at 2 p.m gst so that's like 7 a.m cet for my fellow european folks and so they're gonna be talking about you know vanguard vice rebirth for you and bushi navi which is a platform they announced for like organizing tournaments and like an online database kind of like you know like Yu-Gi-Oh's like uh what's called your neuron and that one like started development i think in like summer 2019 so it's definitely we haven't heard much about it outside of like the release of deck log so it's quite nice that we finally have something about that as well but i'm curious to see what they're going to announce here i think it's the 13th anniversary for bushrod as a company and so i guess that's why they pushed it i don't know if this date bears any particular significance but i mean it's gonna be exciting anyway maybe these strategy presentations will start being once if, like every few months like three times a year rather than just twice who knows but i'll be excited to see what we get for vanguard hopefully we get a like some new like set announcements maybe another collab announcement and hopefully an online client please be an online client i'm still still kind of hoping for that then in terms of tournaments, similar to the mid-spring tourney actually, the Vanguard Day is having another event in the end of April, so on the 26th. So of course, these are basically like for entry, you get the Twin Buckler Dragon, the PG for Dragon Empire from the booster set in this kind of like SP foil full art. And then random players are awarded this Trickstar mat for, you know, with a Dragon Empire logo on it. So it looks very nice, looks very cute, and it's a nice little thing. So they had the MLB mat in February, 
then Japan went into another state of emergency, I think. And so now things have calmed down and they're kind of lifting the state of emergency and tournaments can start happening again. So there we go. We have a Trickstar map for this month and I wonder if they'll change every month actually. And then of course, one of the biggest hypes of the year is the Dai Vangasai, so the big Vanguard Festival. I've been to a Dai Vangasai in my life before and trust me, it is a whole different experience. Having a huge festival just for your favorite card game definitely hits different and this time they actually announced more about the tournaments. So for the tournaments on the 4th of May, there's going to be a four player fight tournament, which I'm not sure how exactly, I guess it's like 4v4, I'm not sure how you count that if like, you know, two players lose and I'm not sure if it's like a team thing or how it exactly works, but I guess we'll find out. So that one on the first day will be V Premium, so that's going to be basically using the cards from Clan Selection and stuff like that. And then on the second day, on the Sunday, oh no, it's actually it's actually a Wednesday, but these are like national days off because it's Golden Week. I just saw the Suyobi, the, the water kanji there. So on the second day, there will be the Clan Leader fight, which is going to be premium of all things, which is definitely interesting that, you know, it's not like, you know, it's a Clan Leader fight, so it can't be with Overdress because there's nations there, but I actually chose to go with premium instead of B premium, so I'm actually quite curious, you know, how that happened because it's not very common in Japan, I guess. And then the four-player fight tournament is also happening for both Overdress standard as well as for premium. So that's also really cool, basically two premium tournaments to choose from, or you can play premium and then also also play standard. It's actually quite cool. I think that this is actually very, very nice. These are all side events, so keep that in mind. You know, I think the main event is actually like regular standard, if I'm not mistaken. It's so like the WGP qualifier main event, but the side events are always the biggest hype. When I went to WGPs in Japan, I usually went for the side events myself. I usually played in the clan leader tournaments because winning that clan leader card was always much more exciting to me than like trying to qualify for WGP, which I couldn't even play in because I commentated. So, you know, I always like the side events more because Japan does them really, really well. So if you're in Japan, I definitely recommend going there. You know, I honestly wish that, you know, vaccines would have rolled out a bit faster because I was definitely aiming to go to this Daivangasai. But I guess at this rate, we're going to be going to Daivangasai 2022. But that one should be definitely very hype because I think a lot of people are planning to go to that one. And honestly, like once traveling becomes like, you know, properly possible again, I definitely think that it's worth to plan a Japan trip somewhere at the beginning of May, like first two weeks of May, so you can actually go to Daivangasai. It always happens at the beginning of May, and it's a super fun event that I really recommend to anyone. Couple more things for Daivangasai though, they are releasing some special merch during the event as well. So first things first, they have mini card sleeves for all of the DBT01 overtriggers. So we see basically every nation's overtrigger as a sleeve, as well as the main key visual for overdress, as well as this sort of like event design that uh, the Daivangasai has, and also there is a mini 2021 Daivangasai storage box, which also looks quite nice, and you know, it's always nice to have those like extra storage boxes as well. On top of that, they're doing rubber playmats for Daivangasai, so these are retailing for about 27 bucks, and so they have one for the key visual, and then they have one each for the different nations, so these look really, really cool. They are the start deck visuals, and I think these are definitely very amazing, and I like how they use them. I personally like when it's just like the logo of the clan or the nation plus one one unit because then it's like very focused. These look nice, but the kind of split up focus of six different cards on one playmat isn't, I don't know, I'm personally not that big of a fan of it, but I think it's still pretty cool. And then the final event that we have to talk about is that the VMC Winter 2020 is actually being resumed. So once again, this event was supposed to already be over by now, but because of the state of emergency, they had to delay everything, postpone everything, cancel everything. And so now it is resuming with a new prize card and playmat to boot, which this time is Perfectus Messiah. So this has, of course, the special playmat for the Messiah with the, like, look at that victory crown on his, like, scepter or whatever. But then the card itself is a 10k power grade 3 cannot be played in a, you know, cannot be used in a fight, so it is a prize card, whose skill is, by soul blasting six messiahs, you deal six damage to your opponent. So of course, it is a prize card, it cannot be used, just like Dragonic Overlord the Victory, and you know, Blaster Blade, His Highness, or whatever it was, it was called, or His Royalty, I can't remember what exactly it was called, but it's just another one of those prize cards, but I always like that about VMC, that they do these really, really cool prize cards. And you know, there's always the hype, it's like there's only one of these prize cards in the world, you know, it's always hype like that, so pretty cool thing that they're doing. And before we go on to the actual Zero News, a couple other pieces of merch that they announced. One thing is these plate acrylic stands. So there's seven different types, and they're basically acrylic stands that have the visuals of each of the ride lines from the first booster set. At the very least, the ones that actually have full, fully fleshed out arts. So these are basically the Star Deck ones, plus the Orphist one, as well as the Zorga one. So those are featured here. So sadly, none of the Desert Gunners that we saw, you know, none of Eugene. 
or Hexa Orb Sorceress or Barra Magnus, but still pretty cool. And also on the right, we see these muffler towels. So they're 20 bucks each, and they'd have a design for each of the different nations. So that's a pretty cool, nice little piece of merch as well. Of course, as usual, it's hard to get these regularly. I think the online anime store, it said would have them, but I'm, don't take my word on that. Otherwise, Merukari is always your friend. Some more merch. There's also these like acrylic key holders for each of the characters. Definitely want the Tomini one on that, retailing for 800 yen a piece. And then the unit can badge set, which has a can badge for a character as well as their main unit retailing for a thousand yen a piece so like 10 bucks all right for zero we got the new rank reward which is the star rain trumpeter so this was a triple rare card that was revealed a little bit ago so depending on how many you pull when you're pulling for this set you can decide if you want to actually climb and try to get it or not this right after zenith season is definitely quite taxing for gold paladin players so let's just put it that way on top of that there's another new event coming which this time is focused on world invasion which sounds kind of a weird title for an event but the way it works is that it's running from the 2nd of April to the 9th of April, so just one week. During the campaign, you can get items for completing missions and for the total number of Link Joker wins of each player. By clearing campaign missions, you can get Omega Medals to exchange for a reverse unit, which applies to cards released before the 3rd of 31st of March, so that might not include the actual reverse cradle that might release in this set. Then there's a card exchange. Exchange the normal versions of a unit to their reversed forms. Cannot exchange from reverse to normal. Only applies to cards of the same rarity released before 31st of March. So because it says that you can't like exchange your double rare Ramiels into Ramiel Reverse, it's pretty interesting. So I guess you can exchange your spare Lukiers to Lukier Reverse. It's uh, interesting. And then of course they do a 10 gacha pulls with triple rares. There'll be an exclusive 10 pull gacha with 1000 gems. Get a triple rare ticket for set 17 as a bonus. So there's all kinds of interesting things happening with this like new release there's also apparently going to be an ability to trade for monarch sanctuary alfred which is also quite nice so yeah overall a pretty interesting event we'll see how it actually runs when it comes out it's not the first time they've done these like card exchange events so i'm pretty happy that they keep doing them as well and now let's quickly take a look at the newly revealed Glendios cards. So first things first, we have World Line Dragon. So this one says Vanguard Circle and Soul at the beginning of your ride phase. If your Vanguard is not a grade three or higher, then you can discard one reverse unit from your hand. Look at the top five cards of your deck, add one of them to your hand. If you added a reverse card, then you can create a card that is the same as that one and put it back into your deck. Therefore, it kind of replaces those triggers that you lost from your deck, just basically like the Maelstrom Searcher that we had in the previous set. Then they also showed the Cold Death Dragon, Star Vader. So this is just a rare and also grade two. Reaver Circle when placed. If your opponent has a locked card, you can count on lost one. At the beginning of your opponent's next turn, then your opponent has to choose, take the top card of, the other, of their deck and call it to a rearguard circle as a locked card. So that's kind of how they get around that skill with Zero's rulings, which is pretty interesting how they decided to do that. Then we got the grade two, which is the Star Vader Magnet Hollow. Vanguard Rearguard Circle when this attack hits the opponent's vanguard if your vanguard is a star vader you can count lost one and then search your deck for any reverse card and add it to your hand and so why are you playing all these reverse cards well of course for glendios but they also issued a ruling that normally you know the reverse cards they don't have like a ruling on them that says you can use them in link joker but now it says that you can use them in link joker but if you do they will not have any effects so basically they can be put in link joker decks but they will be vanillas with just reverse in their names so of course that is nice because they're very important for glendios and so of course glendios itself is a huge huge wall of text. First things first, number break five at the beginning of your main phase. If your opponent has five locked cards, then you win the game. So of course, that's a big win con. Limit break four, once per turn, count must one, discard a reverse unit. And then during your opponent's next end phase, your opponent's locked cards do not unlock. Then once per turn, when your reverse rear guard is placed, you choose a random back row priority rear guard on your opponent's side of the field and lock it. During your opponent's next end phase, that locked unit will not unlock. So basically, I mean, let, let's get the last effect out of, out of the way first. All your reverse rear guards gain plus 5k power and cannot be retired by opponent's card effects. So basically how this works is that you go into Glendios, let's say you break right over infinite zero, so you get lock, lock. Then you play a reverse unit, you lock another thing randomly, and then that thing cannot be unlocked. Then you use Glendios's limit break effect to count plus one discard a reverse to omega lock those three. The next turn, or then, then you can call a 
cold breath or cold death sorry and then call another thing locked on their field and then the turn after that you can call another reverse unit lock the final fifth card on their board or use another cold death so they have five locked cards again and then once it goes from their right phase into their main phase and they have five locked cards because you've been omega locking everything you win the game so this definitely allows for zero damage glendios to be a thing again <laughs> because you basically just get to you know you search your reverse cards, they haven't even shown some of the support cards that showed up in the story already, but you get to search your reverse cards and just basically set up for this game-winning play. They buffed it a fair bit, but I think the buffs were pretty necessary to make this good enough for Zero, because otherwise it definitely felt like it was a bit too clunky, and even then it's going to be so hard to fit everything in, because you're going to basically have like four infinite Zeros and like four Glendios, and then that leaves you with five spaces for reverse units. So maybe you might want to actually like reduce your amount of Glendios as inf infinite zeros and like try to hit them with the world line, stuff like that. It's going to be pretty interesting how this actually paces out because yeah, this is going to be a very interesting deck for zero. It was very, very like shocking when it came out in the TCG and might not have been super great when it came out in the TCG, but definitely built up over time, especially in G. So yeah, it's definitely quite exciting. All right, now finally time for cards. Oh my God. And of course, the most important thing when we talk about cards and overdress was that Pomadi's voice actress was there on stream today and she blessed us with the hey guys. Hey guys. <laughs> of course, Tono Hikaru literally just blessed us and blessed our ears with three different variations of hey guys throughout the stream. Absolutely phenomenal. God bless her soul. But let's talk about cards. So last week we got a couple of pretty whatever Dark States cards. We got the Grade 2. I think Megan is her name. If you Soul Charge this turn, she gets plus 2k power on a Grade 2. Not that great. This might be for Barrow Magnus. The Grade 1 is kind of similar as well. Steam Artist Pitohana. So her effect is also you can put her into the Soul to give another unit plus 2k. This feels even more so like Barrow Magnus support because it goes into the Soul to help you set up for Barrow Magnus's plays in general. However, the next three cards that we got are definitely very, very impactful because these are actually overdress support for Dragon Empire. We got this amazing card, which is Verena Arcus or Alcus. It's an overdress card, so you overdress by going over the Trickstar, which is also, you know, good that you build it over the Trickstar as well. When placed on Rearguard Circle, if this unit is an overdress, kind of must one, draw two, and this unit gets power plus FK until end of turn. This is absolutely fantastic. The regular Verena, you know, sure the retire was nice and the extra like 10k power was also pretty good, but this is so much better because this deck, just from the start deck, you could feel how badly it lacks the ability to draw cards. Like it lacks that card draw so damn bad. And that felt like the worst part about it, honestly, is that it just like ran out of cards in hand so quickly. You had to play it super aggressively to actually like win with it. And so now getting such an amazing card draw card is so damn nice. The only downside is that like the order from the start deck and also the ride line cards only search the actual Verena from the start deck so you will not be able to fetch this out so I think ratio wise you might be going with like four of this Verena and then like two of the actual like one from the start deck because you don't need it as much as you need this one you can search the other one out and recur it from the drop zone with the order but this one you need to actually draw into then the grade three is stealth dragon Hadoshugen when placed on rearguard circle if you have a unit in the overdress state kind of one and retire an opponent's rear guard. So this is quite good purely because you get that pretty cheap retire. I don't think it's necessarily going to be that great because you don't really have the space for it. And I think your board is mostly going to be like overdressed grade twos for the most part. And like, sure, this is a fine backup grade three, but I feel like you want to put your counter blast to other things for the most part. And quite a few things in this deck do counter blast, but I think in terms of the different retire cards, this is probably the best one so far for the overdress deck. And then finally, burning up pure prayer. This is the art that we've seen since overdress got announced, and I've been using in these overdress like news thumbnails all the time, as some of you guys have noticed. And this is a blitz order, actually, which is cool to see. It's a grade two blitz order, so you play during your opponent's battle and if you have three or more cards in your damage zone when you play it one of your units gets power plus 15k until end of that battle so these defensive blitz orders for the most part have felt like maybe we'll get one of these like 15k defense blitz orders in every nation because Stoikia got one in the starter deck, now Dragon Empire has one as a common, and hopefully we get even more, because I really like these defensive options. It's basically having an additional trigger in your deck as a defensive card, and it's like, sure, you can't use it to actually, like, you know, like, play down on the board and, like, be aggressive with, 
but I can see this definitely be, being played purely because it's a 15k shield and it's very easy to set up. Like you don't need to do any rocket science to actually have that 15k be active. You just need to be at three or more damage, which naturally you're going to get to pretty quickly because of the way that Overdress is played. Then this one is very important, which is the Detonation Mutant Bobal Mine. So this is in English actually. So this was a nice little card reveal. At the end of the battle, this unit boosted. If your order zone has a set order, put it into your soul, counter charge one. Dimension Police, for the three years that V was on, didn't get a single counter charge card. So I'm really glad to see that Brankade gets counter charge right out the gate in the first booster set. And this is our double rare, so it's going to be universal for all of Brankade, whether you're playing the, you know, Seraph Snow deck with the Prisons, or if you're playing Orphist and you're playing with the set orders, you know, the, the, Abyssal Dark Knight stuff. And this is just so good. Having this counter charge is amazing. It also converts into a soul, which means that you can soul blast it for your costs. You have quite a few cards that say like, Counterboss 1, Soul Blast 1, do something. So the soul cost definitely adds up. And it's also good for the mirror match when you're playing Brand Cape Mirrors because you're both taxing each other's soul to call stuff out. So this also not only clears itself from the board, so your opponent can't have three cards in the prison, it also gives you a soul to be able to free stuff from the prison for next turn as well. So I'm super happy that we already got a counter charger for Brand Cape it's just really really great nova grapplers have always been the ones more popular for having a lot of counter charge so i'm assuming this is the influence of novas into Brankate. so thank you very much novas for uh somehow finding a kaiju and letting him counter charge very nice and then we have this also kaiju looking thing called Doramura for Brankate. This is a great two this time, which works with Orphis. So when placed on Rearguard Circle, if your world is an Abyssal Dark Knight, cut off one, soul bus one, and draw a card. So as I said earlier, you know, we have a lot of these draw card effects in Brankate, which I really, really like. But this is on a grade two body, unlike the one in the, you know, police build, which is a grade one body. I think it's a very nice effect because having card draw effects is really good, especially on a grade two like this. But the only complaint I have is I wish this worked with just like Knight, not just like abyssal dark knight or like dark knight because you oftentimes will probably want to be like drawing into that second world card to actually hit the abyssal dark knight and so it would have been nicer if it let you draw with just a dark knight so you could draw into the second set order so you can go into the abyssal dark knight so that's my only complaint about it but otherwise this card is very nice card draw on a body is always going to be good a couple promos got announced as well there was a dragon empire one a grade one which is drag raider hardy when placed on rearguard circle you can count one to retire an opponent's back row rearguard seems okay but 6k body is a little bit low my might be relevant just to swing under things but overall it seems all right i think the grade three in terms of like canvas one to retire something was a little bit better because it's universal then also we got a dark states promo which is the steam gunner rimush during the battle that she boosted if you have five or more cards in your soul she gets plus 2k and your opponent cannot intercept during this battle so that's kind of nice especially against dark states as well which you know has a lot of those like intercept with extra power kind of cards as well so might be relevant eventually might not be but i'm glad that the promos are back to being kind of like mm, maybe be, rather than like super staples and then today we got some more reveals in the morning which was for Keter and these are really good we got pain killer angel which is a double rare and a very universal one at that at the end of the battle this unit boosted soul blast one and retire this unit to draw one very simple effect but very very nice we saw this in the anime as well actually so this feels like a universal card that you can play in any Keter deck whether it's going to be bastion or hexa orb or any deck that comes out in the future as well because of how universal it is with hexa orb in particular since you know the top cards of your deck from looking up all the time you can choose to like use this before attacking with the vanguard to draw into your duds to then hit the triggers after or if you know the triggers are coming just attack with vanguard first and then use it after that to actually draw that one card also for Keter for the early game it's quite nice because you only want the great threes in your hand later on or like if you don't have enough great threes in your hand you want to be able to hit them to actually use the ride line effects and so being able to soul blast one and retire to draw is good purely for the fact that you get to draw into those great threes to make sure that you're always hitting them for the ride line requirements like the two at the start then three so it's definitely a nice card i think there's a great one that you do want to run in keter and so i'm pretty happy that they released this then we have witch of the great serpent solaria so her art is pretty damn good and her effect is when discarded from your hand during your turn cut almost one soul blast one and draw one so again another draw Draw effect also very good so in bastion when you discard for bastion's own effect to restand one of your rear guards of course this will proc and you'll be able to just draw an extra card on top of that to keep building up that hand in hexa orb there's not been any use for this other than the ride deck but even then when you discard for the ride deck it's pretty nice because you get an extra form of draw so i like like we had that grade two in bracket earlier which like when discarded can almost want to call itself so this one is like almost one almost one to draw so it kind of balances out having to discard for the ride deck as well and then finally a defensive option of for Keter Sanctuary, I can't believe it, Truth Reader Kokabiel. 
Her art is actually insane. Like, they've been doing some insane things with the Angel Feather like art in Keter so far, and I really hope they continue doing this and turn it into its own deck. Because her effect is if your Vanguard is Apex Ruler Bastion, for every two of your grade three units, she gets plus 5k shield, including this card. So when you guard with her, she's second on your field already. So if you just have the Vanguard Bastion and her, that's already 5k shield because that's two grade threes. So then if you have two other rear guards that are grade three, like in your front row, for example, then she's a 10k shield. If you have a full board, then she's going to be a 15k shield if you guard with two of them though that turns it into it turns into eight cards on the board which basically makes it so that it's like 20k shield each which is pretty damn good so i like these kind of defensive cards we're probably going to see this played as well to be honest just because of how nice it is honestly you have so many so much space for all these great threes and some of them are just like little power gain cards so i think having a defensive card like this is also pretty damn nice to add a little bit of shield to that deck as well and finally what you came here for what you clicked on this video for and what is in the thumbnail is the actual over triggers but I think you guys know my kind of way of approaching these videos by now. I always like to go through the news first and like, you know, kind of go through everything and then get to the things that were actually revealed for the big like news segment. So these are the remaining over triggers. First, just so we can actually discuss this a bit later, let's quickly look at the previous two that we've seen so far because we have English scans of them already. So Drag Veta, of course, is a Dragon Empire over trigger. Adds 100 million power when you check it, draws, and also banishes itself when you check it, whether on, a, you know, offensive or defensive plays. And then when you drive check it, keep in mind these have to be drive checked, not when you damage check them, they have an additional effect. This one's additional effect is you restand your Vanguard. So we already knew this one. It feels very strong in premium in particular, but here you're going to basically be able to, you know, drive check again and also basically, you know, use any on attack abilities once again, which can be pretty nice as well. The Dark Taste one we saw last week as well, which was the Galma held. This one's additional effect when you drive check it is to give yourself basically the effect for the entire game, which is during your turn, all your vanguards get plus 10k power plus one crit. So the reason why it says all of your vanguards is of course, because even when you ride, you know, grade one, grade two, grade three, then persona ride, persona ride, persona ride, your vanguard changes, but because it says all of your vanguards, then it will apply to every single vanguard even after that. So this one is also very nice, especially if you check it very early, because then you get that extra 10k in a crit for the entire game. If you check it later on when you're already about to win, it doesn't really matter as much compared to some of these other ones, but it's still a pretty good one that we should keep in mind when we're comparing these five. And keep in mind, the over triggers come as one of the five per box. So if you open a case, which is 20 boxes, you're gonna get basically four of each of them so that's also pretty damn good or at least you should get four of each of them i think normally all right so let's talk about these new ones so the first one that we have is star dragon deity of infinitude eldo breath the additional effect when you drive check this one in brand gate is that you double the power and critical of all of your front row units until end of turn so this one feels quite good i was pretty happy when i saw this one because essentially when you drive check it early it's an extra crit and of course don't forget you always draw when you check an over trigger so it's like a crit and a draw combined if you check it on turn one or two but in turn three this is really dangerous because you basically have the situation where if your opponent's on two damage you attack with a vanguard and they say no guard and then you check this you give an extra crit to your vanguard and so they immediately take go to four and your rears also are now like massive you know because you first apply the hundred million and then you double it so your rears are really really big and on top of that they are swinging for lethal as well so your opponent has to have pgs at that point which you know early on in the game they might not have on top of that like if you're seraph snow and your opponent's on zero damage the super high roll case is that you go like crit crit all effects to Vanguard, over trigger, and then that basically makes it so that you were doing three damage and it doubles into six, and so your opponent just dies. That's probably never gonna happen, but it's it's kind of wild that that can happen. So I think people have said this before, but this is definitely the one that swings games very, very hard. And especially in late game, right? You set up a nice board. Brankate isn't known for high power, so you know, sure, the thing that you apply the power to will be like 200 million. That's insane. You have to PG that. But generally, if you're not persona riding, the columns are like 21 and keep in mind it doubles the power at the time that it has so if it's like just an 18k attacker it's like 36 plus 8 like 44 that's pretty guardable even if the critical is doubled so it's not super crazy i think it's especially that 100 million doubling so your opponent just always has to have pgs ready against branke because you never know when you can get blown up 
In Orphist, this feels more dangerous because Orphist has the really big power columns where, you know, you have the 15k boosters and Orphist itself is an 18k attacker and they have like the power up abilities and stuff like that, like the order that powers them up and all those things. So there it feels like it's even more explosive. But for now, Brankey doesn't really have very high power. I've been playing the deck quite a fair, like the start deck a fair bit. I'm going to start testing with the actual like cards that have been revealed for it as well. And it's power wise, it's not super huge, but the extra critical is definitely big and this can definitely sway games. So I think this is definitely one of the better over triggers. It's really, really strong and I'm personally very happy about it. It feels very DP, so I definitely like that a lot. Then the Keter Sanctuary one is the Light Dragon Deity of Honors Amartinoa. The additional effect when you drive check this one is until end of turn, you also perform drive checks for the battles your rear guards attack. Hello Ultima, it's uh, been a good while. Nice to see you again. But yeah, of course, everyone is talking about this. Like in Bastion, for example, this is pretty big because Bastion says when you reveal a grade three for your drive check, it doesn't say for his drive check for any, right? So what you can do is swing with the Vanguard, check this and go like, okay, my rear guards have drive check now. So we twin drive for your Vanguard, swing with the rear guard and then check a grade three from that rear guard swing to re-stand that rear guard of its own and then attack with it again for another two drives and attack with the other rear guard for another two drives. So eight drives in, are possible in this. Sure, you go through your deck very quickly, but eight drives is even in premium. Pretty nuts. Like, that's like Bustard territory. There's like one deck that does that, and that's Bustard. So this one definitely feels pretty damn ridiculous. There's also now an infinite loop that's been figured out very quickly with Platina Azel in premium, where you basically use Platina Azel's effect to make it so that you always, like, for drive checks, you look at top two, drive one of them, and then call one of them. So you attack with the Platina Azel, check this over trigger. How you set it up is beyond me. But then when you check it, you give that effect that your rear guards will now check for drives. So you attack with the rear guard and you check and then you basically get to, you know, call like you, you get to activate one of them and call the other one. You can call it over the thing that attacked and then just keep doing that. Just keep, you know, attacking, drive checking, calling over, attacking, drive checking, calling over and just multi attack, multi attack, multi attack. You have best lock that can build up power as well and like restand all the time. It's pretty degenerate if it goes off, but I don't know how you secure that in goals, like to make sure that you get this over trigger because only Ultima can do that. And as everybody says, you know, or has been saying, because it's pretty obvious, when your opponent goes for Ultima, you're probably dead anyway. But yeah, there's a lot to be discovered with this over trigger. Definitely feels like it also sways games very hard. Feels like one of the best ones. I think a lot of people are saying it is the best one so far as well. I think it's definitely this and the Brankian ones feel super, super good for me right now because of how they can swing games. And then we have the final one, which is the Stoikea one, which is Source Dragon deity of blessings bless favor the additional effect when you drive check this one is literally rainbow trigger so you draw a card then you choose a unit and get give it extra critical for that turn and then all your foreign units get power plus 10k does not say until end of turn and if your damage zone has more cards than your opponent you choose a card from your damage zone and heal it so solom said put this really well this never feels bad. You check this turn one, feels good. You check this turn four, still feels good because you get all these extra effects. You know, you get to draw two because Overtrack is draw one by default, so it's an extra draw. You get an extra crit, you get extra power, and you get to heal if you actually have more damage than your opponent. It's definitely the one that sways games the least, but it's definitely a feels good card overall. The only thing that's pretty important here is that the wording in Japanese says, and the English translation, the official one on the official Twitter says, all your front row units get power plus 10k. There's no until end of turn, but it says your front row units get power plus 10k. In my understanding, what this means is that the units in the front row at that specific moment get that 10k permanently. However, if something, you know, were to imprison them, or were to retire them, or were to attack into them, and they retire, or they disappear from the field, then the units that you call to that front row won't magically have 10k again. It's not like a persona ride, where it's like, I, I, whatever you call there, it's it's the 10k. This is literally just those units right there. So what about the Vanguard? Yes, the Vanguard, in my understanding, should also get the plus 10k passively, so they have the plus extra 10k on the opponent's turn as well, but it's still that unit. If you check that on a grade two, and then you ride a grade three over it, that will fade. Now you say, okay, I checked this on my turn three. Now my Vanguard has 23k passive, but then keep in mind that you have to choose. Do I want a passive 23k, but my rear guard's hitting for less? Or do I want a Persona Ride, make that passive 23k fade, but then my rear guards get more powerful? I think that's the trade-off they're trying to go for here. The crit is only for that turn, but this power didn't, is not specified to be for just this turn. We should wait for a specific ruling Q&A to come out once these cards actually come out in a couple of weeks. But for the time being, 
that it sounds like that's how it works in my opinion so i'm definitely pretty excited about it and then finally they premiered the episode a third time and there was a trailer or a commercial for dbt01 and they showed us some new art so here you can see what might be might be the triple rares for stoikea and brandgate that have not been revealed yet so these definitely look like they support magnolia and seraph snow the seraph snow support in particular looks very very nice i like it a lot and we also got a visual showing that the verina valiente is indeed a great three as a lot of people expected and i think in the trailer it was shown to overdress over trickstar if i'm not mistaken so that's also pretty interesting that that happens and it's not like over the regular verina but we'll find out if that's actually the case when we get this card revealed in a couple of weeks or so but it's cool to know it's a great three I, I think everyone kind of expected it to be a great three because it looks a lot more like buff and chad than the other ones and of course they also showed the first dsr which is the alternate art card for the trick star so this has a really nice foiling pattern that they showed in the stream as well it looks super beautiful these look like basically like the pokemon alternate arts like you know i can literally bust this out right here you know these look super beautiful like full art and they have nice textures and everything this kind of looks like that and i hope that these are like once or twice per case if they are too rare it's gonna really feel bad i think there's also Nirvana one that's going to be revealed next week as well. And so knowing that Bruce and Bastion are going to be the DSRs for set 2, when Tomari and Seraph Snow become a DSR later on, yikes. Anyway, that's it for the news. What do I think of the over triggers? I I have different stances on it, right? I think in terms of like ranking them, I think that probably the Keter one is the best, then the Brankate one. Those feel really, really good because they sway games, right? Then the Dark States one, if checked early, is probably better because if you check it on turn one, that's actually phenomenal. But then like if it's checked in like turn five, six, it's kind of like whatever at the very bottom. The Dragon Empire one still feels pretty good, although the least like swingy one, I guess, out of all of these. So maybe that would be in fourth. And then I think the Stoikea one, while the least impactful in terms of like winning the game and just like blowing up your opponent, is still a great effect, right? It's still a great effect that you're happy to see whenever. And I think that, that it's good that we have an overtrigger like that as well. And obviously I have different stances on these overtriggers as well. Like as a commentator, I think that they're great because it's super hype. It's always going to be like if I'm commentating a tournament and an overtrigger pops up, it's like, oh my God, this changes everything or maybe they check it on damage on turn one it's like oh he healed well would you look at that and you know like as a youtuber commentator entertainer i always like those kind of hype moments right it's always fun to highlight that and to like to focus on that and all those kind of things but as a player it's sure it's hype on a casual level but it's still gonna be like when you're literally playing for a world's invite we all kind of talk about this like for a world's invite or literally in a month you know at the end of May, start of June, people will be playing Spring Fest for big prizes, and if you lose to an overtrigger, it's gonna feel kind of bad. I think also Kai put it pretty well, like, we know, it's hard, there's already people that go like, oh, Vanguard's a Saki game, why would I want to play it? It's all like Trigger Sack, you know? The people that don't understand the, like, more, like, competitive side of it, or they've only played the game, like, a couple times, and, like, they just got sacked and quit, you know, they make that argument. This doesn't help with that either, and so, like, from a competitive standpoint, it still kind of sucks. I have played with these a lot already, like, I've been playing with over triggers in, you know, test games for overdress quite a lot already. Most of the time I draw into them, other half the time I damage check them at some point, so it's just like another heal in the draw, or I soul charge them if I'm playing dark states. And like I said before, that one time where it actually determined a game, where like my opponent would have actually lived if I didn't check an over trigger, that was the only time so far that actually it like completely swayed the game. And so I think probably it's going to be something like that like once every 30 games or so it will change a game for you but if you're unlucky and that happens in you know spring fest finals tough luck you know you kind of have to prepare for that like kind of think about your matchup and like you know you might be keeping pgs against certain things but then you might need to always hold on to one extra pg just to be able to guard against these over triggers because at least unlike the like cray elemental one from the start decks these ones only distribute the 100k power once that one distributes it twice which is arguably very annoying whereas these ones only distribute it once so you just need to perfect guard that 100k plus attack and kind of like you know survive through that i do like them from like a content creator standpoint i've been watching a lot of videos as well from japanese players and you know they pull like an over trigger on defense or you know stuff like that and go like whoa crazy crazy oh my god wow 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 so it is hype it's very fun to see but i want to see like once these decks are fully fleshed out and we have the full booster set how impactful they continue to become but yeah so that's my main stance on it and kind of like my ranking of them as well so this video has been going on for long enough so i think you guys have heard enough of me today thank you so much for watching don't forget to check out all the stuff in the description as i said earlier the mid-season tourney you know parkage and all that kind of stuff but on that note that's gonna be it for me today and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye <laughs>